This is an excerpt of a webinar by Garrison Dental. Thank you to Garrison Dental for allowing us to post this excerpt. To see the full-length version, please contact www.garrisondental.com. All opinions are those of Straight Smile Solutions. We are an orthodontic consultancy company that helps general and pediatric dentists with their ortho cases and education. For help with a case, please visit www.straightsmilesolutions.com. Now, enjoy the show. don't do attachment list aligners. So let's talk about attachments. So what are attachments for? Attachments are a handle to help guide a more complicated movement. Attachments are great. And some aligner systems have a lot of attachments. Some have fewer. There's a lot that goes behind it. But I really don't recommend that you do attachment list aligners. Obviously, I'm very familiar with attachment list aligners since I <laughs> helped to start a direct consumer aligner company, which was entirely attachment list. But there's a lot of algorithms that go into it. And I just don't feel like your regular clear, correct, Invisalign, all these ones that they have the, I don't know, the methods down. It's just not the same the way they do it. And it just never seems to work out. If you really, really, really have to do it like this, occasionally you get this patient and they're like, I'm going to go to SDC if I, you won't treat me. You know, and you're like, okay, no, I want, I want you to go to me. I don't want to lose this case. Then this is my suggestion. Do not charge less. Charge the regular price still do a comprehensive case, um, give them one go, one or two goes. And if it doesn't track for whatever reason, it turns into a comprehensive case or they can sign off as having an incomplete, but you're not giving a refund. Anyways, you need to have a really, really good consent form for that. I don't really have that because I just don't do it. So, but you could, I know doctors that do do this and it works out pretty well, but again, again, no discount, still a comprehensive case or unlimited case, no promises. And you basically put that in writing. If you really, really have to do it personally, I wouldn't use Invisalign because their trim and their material is really, really soft. I will show you. Ah, sorry, I've got all kind of demos here. Okay, for example, this is clear, correct? It's pretty rigid, right? Like it's hard for me to bend it. Um, this is Invisalign. Can't do that with clear, correct, right? On the Pro, it's really like the trim line is low, um, it's comfortable, things like that. It's good for perio, but the con. It's not good for attachment list aligners. I would use clear, correct, or reveal. See, I told you I wouldn't side with any particular company. So there's always a, a positive thing. And the, if you do do attachments and you have a li um, laterals that are small, I would put big, chunky. I always ask for full size max attachments, biggest possible on seven and 10. That's just a little tip. You have to ask for it though. It won't, it won't come as default. All right, hang on. Since we're talking about trim, personal preference. I had a daughter that had clear correct and Invisalign. She said, hands down, Invisalign was more comfortable. Her feedback. I've heard that from a lot of people. But the nice thing about the higher trim line, you know, like this, like the straight trim line, is that you can have fewer attachments. Um, and, you know, some people think it's more aesthetic. So again, personal preference, depending on what you want to do. You find what works back best for your practice. Obviously, if you're diversifying too much, then you're never going to get a volume discount. So I think it's always better to stick with one company. Um, and the more you stick with one company, the faster your turnaround times. I feel like the better technicians you get, there's a lot of pros to sticking with one company. But, you know. Okay, never ever do single arch treatment. Just don't, don't do it. <laughs> um, do I do it? Very, very rarely. And I kind of have the same philosophy as I did with um, catchmentless aligners. Usually it's kind of that PETA patient that's like, I only want uppers. No, I really only want uppers. I'm like, well, it doesn't usually work out. The bite just tends to get really funky and wonky when you do it, unless it's just a crazy easy case. It just messy things happen. So again, my tip, if you're going to do it, is to have a single arch treatment consent form, which is a separate consent form. It's not going to be in your Invisalign and your clear, correct, for sure smile consent form. I'm glad to give you mine. Again, contact me by tomorrow night. I'll just give it to you. Okay. I have a stock copy. Always work for me. I never discount it. It's always full price. It's always comprehensive. <laughs> but here's the tricky part. If this is an insurance patient, you really, really can't be billing that because it is a limited treatment. So now it gets messy. So I would only do this with cash patients, just a tip. Otherwise, you could get yourself in trouble. But yeah, be careful with those. Okay, we kind of talked about case selection. I told you, run your cases by an orthodontist first 50 to 100 cases. However you want to do it, paid free, I don't really care. Um, not an orthodontist who works for an aligner company in the independent 
forth and honest who has nothing to gain or lose, you know, by you picking a certain case. That is my suggestion. Things that might look hard to you might not be that hard. Things that might look easy to you might be a lot harder than you think. And the beauty of an orthodontist is that that's all we do. And I know for me, I mean, I probably indirectly or directly been involved in 20, 30, 40, 50,000 cases. I mean, a ridiculous amount of cases. And I have a really good visual memory. Um, I would all, I don't want to promote myself in terms of that, but I can see a case in my mind. It's like, you can do the puzzle in its head. I'm like, like, oh, this will happen. This will happen. This will happen if you don't do it. Here's a potential risk. But a lot of orthodontists do, especially with experience, going on 20 years of experience. We're like, no, don't do it. Different orthodontists, obviously, you're going to get 10 different answers from 10 different orthodontists. So find the person that you align with and your philosophies mesh. Okay. Told you we talk about IPR. It's one of my favorite subjects. 